Good morning, folks. Jam-packed news today, so knock off the cobwebs. We've got Food Watch, Quake News, the heliosphere, weather, and despite the absent solar wind stream from the departing Corona Hole, we've still got space weather. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and check out the last 48 hours on our star. Not much happened the last 24, but if you recall or just saw the surge in the northern departing active region that we examined yesterday, that burst that cleared coronal particles to turn the color black without detected particles in 211 angstroms, turns out it was not a coronal reorganization of plasma, it was a CME ejection. You see ejecta heading out in multiple directions on C2. C3 it becomes a bit harder to see, but it does coincide with the brightening of a sun-diving comet coming from the Kreutz position. The left tracking burst from the C2 view is the stealth CME we mentioned yesterday. Other, right side, that is the northern event, and NASA tracks them both on their endless spiral here. Remember, Sun is in the middle, Earth is off to the right. NASA expects that CME to impact Earth on July 2nd. And NOAA's endless spiral shows the same, but does not track the stealth CME that was clearly not aimed at Earth. Not sure if that coronal hole stream we've been waiting for will arrive today or not. Might be too weak, but the dark patch facing us now won't miss us, and it should be on the heels of that CME that we've been discussing. Eyes open. Dear Oklahoma, on the heels of the USGS saying your quakes are frac related, NASA has chimed in concurring that the injections are triggering the quakes. In global fire news, a recent revelation from the Earth Observatory revealed fewer fires across numerous areas of the globe. Bit of good news. There's also a new paper out detailing the 3D heliosphere and our motion tracking through the galaxy and the tail it produces on the heliosphere itself. The most interesting bit of these types of news is. That's where the helium comes from in the sky, basically the exact tail region indicating a suck back in layman's terms. In reality, it's magnetohydrodynamics and energetic neutral atoms interacting. Quickly hitting the topic of chemical sprayed on plants, if you find this article confusing, it is sort of written that way. Here's the deal. Companies like Bayer agreed to fund some studies. The chemicals were shown to drop winter survival rates for bees in a significant way. Now the company who funded the work doesn't like the results and questions them. The article mentions that the researchers claim to be independent, which is funny wording that casts doubt on them when in reality they didn't follow the paychecks, they followed the data. And now Bayer and their mistress Monsanto are upset they didn't get the fraud they paid for. Whoops. And so with this in mind, we continue our march towards grand minimum and a meteorological paradigm shift. This is Food Watch. After cold battered crops to start the season, it's heat, hail, and flooding. That extends up into Canada as well. Hailstorms have left unthinkable totals in parts of Europe, while others either cannot catch a break in their drought or got the rain someone else was supposed to get and it turned out to be too much. Agro Insurance provided today's articles on their website. Folks, we've got a world of weather coming up now, including the Gulf Stream and Kuroshio Current and shots of our star to close. CME and route to Earth. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.